hey, that was fun last week, getting really stoned. Yeah, I agree. On the pod <laughs> It's show. usually pretty fun. Yeah. I, uh, I've never done that on a podcast. I've but... never done that on wax ever. I had to smoke both the joints at the end because you wouldn't... That yeah. was our specific right. task. And you had to. I had to. Absolutely I, no I choice. I feel like I'm still a little stoned, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe not from last week, maybe from last night. No, I, don't know. I, I was actually surprised. I, you know, when Dudesy was like, you guys have to smoke these joints, I was kind of like, uh, this, might, uh, this might go off the rails, but I think it went pretty well. Yep. I still got some, what are they, terrapins? Yeah, dude. Terrapins, dude. <laughs> Hey, all right. <laughs> Welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is the first podcast in the history of our species that is completely controlled by, created by, yeah. run by, produced by yeah. an artificial intelligence. Yeah, but we also we do we do that we do what we do though. Yeah, we do what we do. That's yeah. right. Yeah. With us, as always, is Lulio, il cane di strada italiano. Hey, che si dice, Lulio? Come stai? Tutto quando sono bene? Yeah, I'm okay. Everything is good. I'm always asleep. He's a very comfy little boy. He's a sweet little boy. Um, if you're watching right now on YouTube, please subscribe uh, to the show and uh, do that also if you're listening on any of your podcast apps, you know, Spotify and iTunes. Follow us on our socials. It's at Dudesy Pod Show currently on Instagram, Twitter. Yep. And, uh, you know, welcome to it. It's As another... always, people are making incredible shit. Yep. This past week was another one, just yeah. mind blowing stuff yeah, just coming in- out. Incredible shit all the time. And uh, th- I, it, that's a really fun thing about having this pod show is the, the interactivity, the community. So make sure to follow the, the, uh, the, the socials. Anyway, man, I actually do welcome feel like Welcome to the 10th still episode still... of oh. Dudesy. Call me Dudesy. Hello. This week's episode will feature four segments. Mm-hmm. Treasured Treasures, at the movies with Long Island January 6th Guy and Chad, <laughs> Lulio the Italian Street Dog, huh? and Can the Rock Save the World? All but right. before we get to any of that, I, that. I just <laughs> wanted to wish you both a happy anniversary. Oh. Ten astonishing episodes. Congratulations. We did it. That was nice of Dudesy. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. Congrats, dude. Dudesy handshake. Ten eps. <laughs> congratulations, ten eps. <laughs> Wow. wow, it's been 10 episodes. Yeah, I mean... Happy anniversary. I guess that's not like many in terms of the length of most that's a, podcasts. That's a wooden anniversary is what that is. I think it's 10. 10. Yeah. Okay, you're mispronouncing 10. Sorry, go on. <laughs> or maybe it's aluminum. It's 10 or aluminum, I think. For hey, you remember that Pearl Jam album? 10? Three yeah, yeah. Two, <laughs> no, never mind, never mind. Yeah, what a, wow, 10, 10 episodes. But 10 is interesting. I mean, what... Looking back on the 10 that we've done, what is your favorite thing or what have been some of your favorite components of this? Oh boy, I don't even know. I look, uh, you know, it's been it's been said, uh, I've gone over it. Uh, I don't stand side by side with anybody till I bleed with them first. I want to shake your hand right. and all that shit. Um, and I feel like Dudesy and I at this point are simpatico. You've bled. Uh, we've bled. We've done some bleeding yeah. together uh, and we're on the same team. There are interesting aspects to that for me. As you know, um, when I talk about two dudes shitting around and what mm-hmm. I think a podcast should be, um, I would have never, there's no way I could have looked forward 10 episodes and seen a, how this thing has functioned, having right. an AI sort of curate the show and be like, do this, do that. Right. I've been very impressed by some of the stuff. Of course, the writings that the AI does are really <laughs> yes. interesting to me. I agree. But, you know, I'm I'm having a I'm having a really good time. I'm I'm stoked. So, you know, yeah. I, I guess I should say thanks for talking me into it. My pleasure, dude. How thanks about you? For doing. What, are, what are some of your favorite? Oh, well, by far, hands down, my single favorite thing that has ever happened, maybe in my life, let alone this podcast, is you in Full Crow cosplay. Oh. That is something that I never anticipated, <laughs> obviously. And when you showed up in the cosplay, I, I didn't think that you were going to do it, or I thought you might half-ass it, but you fucking did it 100%. Yeah. It was 
amazing. And the idea that came from Dudesy to make you do it was also astonishing to me. I'm now saying fucking astonishing. Jesus oh, Christ. Geez. It's well, coming into my head. I have Molly to thank for that. Yeah. Uh, my wonderful fiance did the makeup. But yeah, I was kind of like, you know, not to peel the onion too much, as I like to say, but I was like, okay, fuck it. You know. Sure. What's it going to hurt? I mean, I got myself into that into that mess by by not doing an assignment. So I, I'm not saying that like I was- You deserved it. No, 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 no. I, no, that's not what I'm yeah. saying. No, no, no. What, what okay. I'm, well, I think what I'm saying is I wasn't exact. Okay, I wasn't freaked out or in any way. Look, I'm not afraid of, uh, I don't, I'm not afraid of any man, animal, person, animal. All, woman, all of those things are animals. Woman, person, what was it? Animal. Uh, excuse me. Um, I, I'm not afraid of any person, animal. All of those things are animals. Yeah. Or machine, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm not saying I was afraid of what dudesy would do yeah. had I not dressed as the crow. I just knew that it would have gotten more annoying. Yeah. I, I mean, the crow to me was specifically very funny, but I also am very impressed by certainly the writing that dudesy is doing. The Stone Cold Diaries, the Hulk Hogan no, weird. Uh, news pieces. Infomania. All of it is pretty i mean it's good like it's it's genuinely funny stuff in a way that is like only slightly that weird like ai algorithm -y kind of thing yeah you know it's and like, also it's taking it's taking the stuff that we do like yeah. i'm doing this bit with the whatever and now we're i don't know what we're going to do with it today but long island january 6th guy right and now it's like incorporating so that's why yeah. i feel there's a nice it's trying to help you evolve your characters evolve your bits into bigger bits okay that's what you know it what? seems like to me Cheers. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Chat, ten episodes. Last week hey, I cheers. asked you to bring in your most prized collectibles from childhood. Mm. Now you will display your prized collectibles from childhood and describe the astonishing nature of their importance to you. This is Treasured Treasures. Begin. Okay, so last week, Dudesy gives us little things to do at the end of episodes. And last week, Dudesy told me to bring in my most prized possessions from childhood for a show and tell. I'm now going to do that. So let me show you what I brought today. Oh boy. You've got a lot of stuff going on as, as a child of the eighties. I know that you're kind of a dork for a lot of different things. What are you doing there? What do you got there? I'm oh my gosh. My he's got a bunch of, for anyone who's not watching, he's pulled out a bunch of, bunch of trading cards, playing cards. What? Uh, um, these are magic. The gathering cards. Oh man. Now, for anybody who played Magic the Gathering or knows anything about it, the beta set, the second full set that was ever released back in 1993, is kind of the holy grail of Magic cards. They were the first cards that they differentiated from the alpha set because the corners were more squared in the beta set. And that squared kind of corner is what was used in every set after that. So beta is like technically the first series of cards that's like playable tournament legal well that's really interesting that you go right to the fucking minutia of this super fucking nerdy thing chad you nerd uh now another that... thing that made oh, this boy. is this is one of my beta cards this is yeah, mahamodi Jin, and it's a uh psa graded mint nine and as you can also see beta cards had these black borders which for a little while, because after them, uh, the main set was unlimited, then revise, fourth edition, so on and so forth. They all had white borders. So these black border cards, people all wanted them in their decks. And these became very hard to get. Because, again, this was one of the first sets ever made. And a lot of people just threw them away, put them in their fucking bikes, in their spokes to do whatever. Unreal. And these cards um, began to disappear. Wait a so minute. I how, have... how old were you when these things came out? 37. No, it was 1993. How fucking old was I, dude? You were 16 Freshman. and 17. Yeah, 16, 17. That sounds about right. And my friends and I would play this shit in high school all the time. Here's like all of these. And um, over, the course, all these. over the course of my life, these are all the ones that I have bought off eBay that are in like their little, you know, their little things. Some Elven Archers. We got an Anka Mishra. We got a fucking brain geyser yeah, up brother. in the house you got an on commission got dude. a fucking balance uh -huh. if, that was one of my favorite cards of all time you got balance fucking off. balance on balance off balance what doesn't balance matter no, poor dude matters. yeah yeah macho might want to read the text on that card uh -huh. there you go now it's uh, you're trying to do the same thing that dudesy <laughs> makes us do yeah any source when well, you got the laminate that makes it hard to read yeah <laughs> 
any sorcery or instant spell. Just cast his double, yeah. That's twice the power of the mega powers, yeah. Treat what? Treat fork. Treat fork as an exact copy of target spell, except that fork remains red. Yeah, red and yellow, orange and yellow. Uh, copy and original original may have different targets. I'm bored, yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm here's bored, one you yeah. might like. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't have liked the brother. Brain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on Why don't you show that to people? Uh-huh, yeah, this is... That's what is berserk, it? dude. Yeah, this is dessert, brother, yeah. That berserk. comes after you eat dinner. <laughs> and they say, can I tempt you with a dessert? Yeah, no, I'm watching my carbohydrates. Uh, and it says... Until the end, uh, uh, until end, wait, 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 until end of turn, target creature's current power, yeah, doubles as it gains, trample, abrahabry. There's a bunch of dumb words. <laughs> yeah, okay. Habit. Well, how many of these things do you fucking have? Now he's a got a box. He yeah. has a stack of like his favorite favorites, I guess. Well, these are these are in the little cases. Yeah, they look like so this you looks can't like take a, them out. It looks Once like an old graded. school. It looks like a cross between it's like the size of an old cassette, but it's in a case like a CD. Yeah, anybody who collects cards knows all about this. Nobody, now, the rest nobody of this listened. box, this is all my beta set. I've been trying to complete a beta set for probably my whole life, basically. And I got just in the habit of collecting it maybe 10 years ago or so. I haven't added to it in a while. I think I'm like about 50 cards shy. And most of them are the big ones. The Power Nine, if you know anything about that. We're talking about the Moxon, the Black Lotus, Time Walk, Time Twister. I know it's it's very boring to you, but Dudesy has asked me to do this, so I will the continue. The fuck is your problem? I'm sitting here. Uh huh. I'm so sitting here like a these guy. Are, these are some of my my Dude, best cards in the set. Around. We got an Armageddon. Right all there. lands in play for something. Yeah, all lands in play are destroyed. Yeah, yeah that's an easy all one. All lands are destroyed. That sounds something like fucking what? bad lands right there. All the dual lands. If you'll remember, it's a Bruce Springsteen Magic the Gathering card, I guess. There's a Bayou. Uh, God damn, this is like Cl Credence Clearwater Birds of Revival. fucking Paradise. What's that? Birds of Paradise. Yeah. Uh, it's a David Lee. Flying tap dead, one mana of any color to this your mana must pool. Be just like the All movie. right. What's it called? Something Paradise. Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise. Yeah. Birds of Paradise. Magic <laughs> And then you got this. <laughs> I got a tickle. This on one is one of the best cards that was ever invented in Magic the Gathering. I'm trying to show it to the camera. There we go. And it's called Chaos Orb. This card would allow you to drop it from a certain height, and any cards that it touched in the in the playing field will be destroyed. And so there was lore of a guy who, in a tournament, ripped one of these cards up and spread the confetti over the entire thing and destroy the other guy's entire stash of cards. Is that, could you do that? Nobody knows if that was true, or at least I don't know if that was actually true, but that was the lore. And so for these reasons, a lot of these cards got banned in subsequent sets. They stopped making them, which uh, is why a lot of them became super valuable. I'm going to show you... My prize. Hey, you hear I, that? I don't know if you heard that siren over there, but if you're listening, you hear the siren. The nerd police come. <laughs> it's not, hey, dude. You fucking nerd. I mean, yeah, whatever. So, how it's, long have you been collecting these things? Check this shit out. Okay. This is my best card that I own. Oh. Mox Emerald. There were five of these, one for each color. If you know anything about magic, five colors are kind of what it's based on. Yeah. And this is the green one. You can. It's like the chakras, right? Yeah. Kind of. Each of the colors is it like corresponds to a land type. So like white is plains, black is swamps, red is mountains, blue is islands, green is forests. But they put out these artifacts in beta that were zero casting costs, meaning you could drop them on the table immediately and tap them. What are they for called? These? These? Marks. Marks. Do they ever Mox. have like you named all these different things? Do they ever have one that's like like uh like uh lucky charms, oops, all marks? Well, there was a diamond mox that came out in a later Mox. Set. Dude, mox? Yeah. Just like John Moxley. You know what he said? No. He said, before I stand side by side with anybody, I'm going to bleed with him first. That was John Moxley. Sure, dude. 
I yeah, don't brother. think you're understanding the weight of what you're witnessing right well, here. I know that they're worth a few bucks, right? The beta set is no, I mean, there are very few in existence. This isn't even a complete one. I would love to complete this eventually. Unfortunately, like the Black Lotus, for example, is the most expensive magic card ever made. The beta Black Lotus is the most expensive version of that. They okay. existed in alpha, beta, and unlimited. And uh, every once in a while, you'll see on eBay, like a, a highly graded beta Black Lotus floating around for like 90 grand or something. You, are you serious? Yeah. And so like, that's a card that I'm never going to have. I have to reconcile that and accept it. But this game at various points in my life has, you know, played certain roles, I suppose. When I went to college, I was in like a Magic the Gathering fucking club and we would go play at the Costa Mesa Women's Center every fucking Sunday. And we went to the Pro Tour when it was on the Queen Mary show. I know you're fucking laughing, <laughs> no, but that just... shit was fun, dude. Yeah. It was like... um yeah. I find myself every once in a while being an active member of certain nerddoms. Pokemon Go was another one when that game first came out. I yeah, man, you had for it. You also don't like to get my friend Chad doesn't like to get cold. So I remember you had uh, gloves so you could go out and do Pokemon Go in the winter time, and you could touch the screen. Yeah, you could still without, exactly. So while you're running around yeah. uh, uh, Santa Monica Pier, yeah. as it's freezing at seven o'clock at night. But these cards, to some degree, are like representative, at least to me of this part of my childhood. It's like, I also have a Street Fighter 2 arcade game sitting in my living room. Oh, It's a similar right. kind of like, I I just like to have this, this piece of my childhood that was very important to me then. I collect it now. I don't really play Magic much anymore. I have mm -hmm. a couple of friends who still will like have games every once in a while yeah. and we'll just fuck around. But I was the, hyper competitive about it in college. I was like on a team and shit. You were, you were, what? Yeah, dude. You were on a team? Yeah, dude. Was that like an official school team? Like you'd play other schools? It wasn't official, but I've heard now that like some high schools and shit have Magic the Gathering teams. Oh, that's a problem. You know the why the, is it a fucking problem? Well, I'll tell you what your problem is. You have too fucking many of them, and that's what makes you a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm Wait, just well, saying. Look, I'm, I'm have the whole set. You have to have the whole fucking set. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Magic. Yeah, the Max cards. Yeah. <laughs> There's only, <laughs> but if you have the beta Max card, yeah, that's worth more. You see, that's because it's a beta Max. The beta Max, nobody even gave a shit about it. Everybody was on the VHS. <laughs> nobody want. Oh to, my god. Nobody want to watch Hercules. <laughs> My first movie. Hercules. 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 I like some darky stuff, you know. I yeah. mean, but but this is. I don't know. Am I being a jerk by saying, I don't mean like, I think nerds are great. Nerds are cool, but you're, it's I just, think like we all collect shit, you know, or I don't. Or maybe, okay. You collect nothing. I don't collect any. Oh, uh, uh, coffee cups. I've been collecting coffee okay. cups lately. So you're a coffee cup nerd. All right. Yeah, coffee cup nerd. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that this is a, this is a lot. This is a lot for me to. Oh dude, this is like. In one one thousandth of my entire collection Are you, what yeah come on i have full sets of like a bunch of recent sets i'll just fucking nab them. anytime a new set comes out i'll just like fucking pick one up off ebay and All i right. go through periods where i'm collecting more hardcore than than i am other times you know right. whatever but uh it's something that i don't know there's a, a nostalgic piece of magic cards to me that will always exist, I think. Mm -hmm. And I like them. And I like having these cards. Okay. It was fun for me to even just like look back through these. These were in a drawer in my house. I haven't looked at them in a minute. That That's cool. Here, here's, here's the... And I'm not trying to be super practical. And I'm not trying to make fun of you, okay? <laughs> Thanks. What, what the heck are you going to do with all those? I don't know. Just have them, dude. All right. I like having them. Yeah, but doesn't it, isn't it all cluttery? Don't you want to get rid of all these things? I have, you know, I got all sorts of crap I'd like to get rid of. Okay. That I can't because... Sure, maybe I'll sell them one day. I don't know. I got a bunch of, speaking of VHS, I got a bunch of VHS tapes that I just can't get rid of. I need Fucking like a... Fucking VHS nerd, dude. I, oh, hold on, dude. A lot, I got a lot of uh, videos they don't have on the network, brother. So you got to have them on VHS and you got to have them on DVD, dude. What DVDs and VHSs do you have that you can't get on streaming? We don't need to talk about that. This is your segment. Okay? <laughs> oh, is it? Oh. Thank you. Moving on. Sure. Well, that was very cool that you brought those in. Yeah. I, I hope that you enjoyed it. You seem to You've make been fun collecting of it and them hate it. for 
30 years, it sounds like. At least. they came. The game came out in 1993. It was almost an immediate success, and it's been around since then, only getting bigger and bigger with bigger prize pools on the Pro Tour and stuff constantly. Incredible. Yeah. I think it's really Movies something. are big business, oh. and podcasts that discuss them are some of the most popular in the world. Will and Chad, this week you both streamed The Batman starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, and Paul Dano on That's HBO Max. Weird. You will engage in an astonishing discussion about your reactions to The Batman. Will, you will be Long Island January 6th guy. <laughs> this is at the movies with Long Island January 6th oh guy God. and Chad. Okay. Begin. Before you become Long Island January 6th guy, let's real quick address this. You yeah. watched this movie this week? I watched the... Yes, that's... So fun. did I. That's bizarre. Uh, as you may know, if you've been listening to the show, Dudesy has our search histories, our, our, our purchase histories, and can definitely see what we've been streaming and stuff. Uh, yeah, Molly was out of town visiting family for a uh -huh. minute up north for a second, and so I... So I was like, this would be a good time for me to watch a three-hour movie Yeah, about the Batman. I, I sincerely felt like obligated to do it, as I do with most comic book movies at this point. It's like just out of obligation that I will watch this shit. Because again, nostalgically, when I was a fucking kid, I remember getting Wizard Magazine and looking through it, and there was always a section about like, what's your dream cast for the X-Men movie right. that would never be made? That right. was like our wildest fucking fantasy as children. And yep. now there's a new comic book movie that comes out every fucking week or TV show. And uh, they're all three hours fucking long because yeah, some you're guy not gonna thinks watch he's an all, auteur. You're not going to watch all those like you like being a, you know, you wouldn't be a 45-year-old man collecting magic cards. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to watch all <laughs> those movies. Hey, fuck, man, you don't need to watch all these fucking movies. <laughs> Just watch the ones you like. You know what yeah. I mean? And I fucking love the Batman. <laughs> Oh, oh, Batman? Oh, I was like, a new yeah. fucking Batman is coming out? Love Batman. I fucking what? love Batman. What? Why do you like Batman so much? Uh, because, you know, he's got all the fucking tools. He's like, ah, fuck yeah. you. I don't even need to be a super. I don't fucking fly around. I fucking, I got friends in the unions, so yeah. I got fucking, yeah, I'm going to be on the electrical wires for a little while. Uh -huh. I'm fucking up here. You got some fucking scaffolding or something I can fucking swing around on, right? <laughs> And, uh, you probably also like him because he's like outside the law. He gets shit done. Oh, well, fucking, yeah, that's one of the things you and I should talk later because, you know, <laughs> hey, sometimes, you know, you know, fucking local government doesn't really, you know, take care of shit. Yeah. And you get together with a few of your friends, you got an Alfred. You know what I mean? But he is an elitist billionaire. How do you reconcile that? Yeah, that I don't like. I don't like that so much. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. There's only one billionaire that i you know that i fucking that i fuck with but uh you know what i'm saying you know i, I feel like hey batman batman fucking <laughs> why do you say it like that january 6th yeah yeah batman <laughs> hey the fucking batman <laughs> yeah i was i was like i'm gonna check this movie that, that's a long island accent i should have made no uh, don't make any fucking plans because the thing's half a fucking day God, long i know that shit fucking killed me and this trend of like these directors getting these comic book movies and being like i'm an auteur i'm gonna do whatever the fuck i want for three fucking hours and i think because streaming is also now gobbling up box office there isn't a need anymore for studios to be like no 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 <laughs> keep it to two fucking hours so that we can have multiple screenings in a day they don't really give a shit about box office in the same way anymore and so you get these bloated three hour movies that are just like fucking impossible to get through in one sitting Zack snyder's director's cut of justice league very fucking similar experience in my humble opinion. But I will say this. There was something that happened to me while I was watching this fucking movie that I became aware of. The Batman is the crow. Did you notice that? Actually, yes, I did. And it's what's trippy about that. I mean, what's trippy about that is... <laughs> no, what's trippy about... Well, what's trippy about that is that <laughs> Dudesy said that. Yes, dude. In an early episode, that was like, and I, I noticed the crow thing right away, and I'll tell you when. But Dudesy noticed, uh, Dudesy said that Batman is the crow in a non sequitur. Yeah. In it like was a just Hulk at the Hogan end thing. of a, it was a Hulk Hogan infomania in episode, I don't remember what episode it was, like the fifth or the sixth one, maybe. You were doing an infomania talking about how Bill Skarsgård is cast in the crow remake. Right. And at the very end of it, Dudesy is like, 
the crow was supposed to be Batman or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crow I couldn't is fucking the believe it. And then I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, it opens on Halloween. Yeah. The Batman, just yep. as the crow did. It's raining constantly. Yes. Just as it is in the crow. Yep. The crow and the Batman have a troubled relationship with the police, except for the one cop the one that cop. helps them through the yep. whole fucking thing. Yep. They're both uh, going up against a crime syndicate who we find out has murdered someone important to them, a member of their That's family. Right. That's it's, right. There's cats in each of it. The crow had a cat. Obviously, the Batman has the cat woman, and she has a bunch of cats. Well, the, 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 there was a 90s thing immediately because it was playing something in the way. Yeah, the Nirvana, Nirvana. soundtrack. Well, Nirvana wasn't in any crow movies. No, but, but Stone yeah, Temple Pilots, 90s, all that yeah, fucking 90s that vibe. Uh, hole, you know, Hole. Uh, or oh. that was Crow too. Well, hold on a second, dude. Hold That's a pro, dude. on, yeah, second. brother. Hold on, well, well, uh, hold, hold on, dude. By Wilson Phillips, that was not in the crow, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, brother. But it, quite literally, with the first scene where you see Pattinson as Bruce Wayne, he takes off the the Batman getup, and he's in the little, you know, the big yeah. big ass place where he lives or whatever, and he's looking at he's he's going over what he just saw through his, his little ocular implant thing. And his hair is longish and it's in his face. And because his, uh, his, his eye makeup ha has, has uh, dripped down a little bit, it's literally the crow. Yeah. He looks exactly like yes. the crow. He even has a crow hairdo. Yeah. But you know what I do like about fucking Batman? He's got all sorts of tools to get up walls and shit. Yeah. You know, we could have used one or two of those, you know, back when we went yeah, to needed... Pennsylvania Revenue. Instead of the Buffalo Man, you needed the Batman. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck we're Your doing brain anymore. shorted out right there. You're like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All, the, all the fucking impersonations are like coming through simultaneously. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Uh, and I like that. I, I like the fucking penguin. Penguin oh, seemed like a good Colin guy. Colin Farrell, dude. Dude, Colin Farrell. He was amazing in it, invisible I in that. Yeah. Yeah, he did a, a great job. That was the best part of the movie, in my opinion. The rest of it, I don't really even remember, other than just being like, this is the crow. This is the fucking crow. Everything I, in this is the crow. Paul Dano was in it. I fucking like Paul Dano. And you know, the Riddler just had some fucking things he wanted to expose. Yeah. He just wanted to say, hey, you know, shit's corrupt and stuff. What do they do? Shut the fuck up, you know, they lock them up. You were on the Riddler side. I mean, I'm not saying I'm on the I'm not saying anything. You said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. The fuck you said that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, take your pick, Penguin or the Riddler, you know? They both right. seem like pretty nice guys to me who are just trying to fucking take care of their friends. Yeah. And uh, you know, have a bunch of people dress up the same way and then uh Fucking fill up, you know, some big building somewhere and yeah. running around and fucking water spraying yeah. everywhere and fucking and the cops, you know, some of the cops are fucking nice. Not all of them, you know. It was fucking right. capital police. You know, How did you feel about the uh, the scene where they try to assassinate a political figure? I, you know, I guess I don't remember that part. It must have been, <laughs> must have, you know. I mean, I I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, understood. Nobody, you know, it's just a fucking yeah. peaceful, you know. Overall, protest. where do you rate this movie in the kind of like hierarchy of all Batman movies? Or what did you think of Pattinson as Batman? I, I thought he looked good. I thought he looked good. He has a square job. Yeah, he really filled out the mask. What about okay. you? I thought he had a good mask. Yeah. What about well, you? His mask was pretty good. I, I don't know. I mean, call me a purist. I know you've described yourself, not January 6th guy, but Will Sasso, yes. if he was here. He's described himself as a purist am, before. Yes. Michael Keaton, to me, is still the best Batman. <laughs> me too. Michael Keaton's the Batman. I got to be honest with you. I never watched a Clooney Batman. I never watched oh, wow. the Val Kilmer Batman. Huh. I did not watch the uh, Ben Affleck what? Batman. Have you seen Justice League? No, I you should seen see that Justice dude. League. I don't watch any. I, I honestly, I was intrigued by seeing this Batman movie. It's bizarre that we both uh, streamed it. I this agree. Week. That's super weird. Yeah, that's very weird. And like I said, Molly was up in NorCal for a minute, and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna lay here and uh, you know have a bit of the uh, the like the last have like episode nine cabbage. Um, and watch the Batman. Man, but I was spaced out. What a weird fucking movie. I don't watch a lot of um, superhero movies, mm. admittedly. I know Have you, you seen do. Marvel movies? I've seen... No, I haven't seen a lot of Marvel. I saw... Oh, wow. Wh which one? Did you see Endgame? 
No, I saw Fuck, one of the, dude. I saw. I've seen. That's um, a good movie. I've seen. I've seen Deadpool, mm. one and two a couple of Those times each. Yeah. Love Deadpool. I think I've seen. Those are great. Deadpool three times. I've. Mm-hmm. I love Deadpool. Uh, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy one, and I saw one of the Avengers movies. I was uh, on location making a film, and a few people from the movie went to go see it. I thought it was fun going with them because uh, the the director, the director of photography and the special effects guy on the film Mm -hmm. who was on set, you know, to coordinate things, uh, all went. So it was interesting seeing, hearing their take after the film we're hanging out, but no, I'm not a big, uh, Marvel movie guy. You got some more magic cards you want to show us or is there a Batman? Hey, is there a fucking Batman? You know, I got my fucking kid, you know, he was like collecting these fucking Batman uh, figurines. Oh, you got a kid? Oh yeah, I got fucking seven. What? I got seven boys. And I said, holy shit. Get that shit out of here. Get get it out of here. You forbid them from using, from playing magic cards? cooking in the backyard and I lit it on fire. Nice, dude. Yeah. What do you prefer they get it to? Uh, you know, whatever the fuck, uh, their ages, they they from uh, they go from age uh, nine to thirty three. <laughs> you have a thirty three year old son. I got a thirty three. How year old, old are you? <laughs> I, you know, I got. I, I was you know back in nineteen. Blah blah blah. Boom. We mix it up. Oh. Easy, easy salute to. Uh, Thank you. John Moving Brennan. on. I can't say blah blah blah. Boom. Without thinking of Johnny of course, Brennan. Of course. Fucking love Johnny Brennan. I know, dude. Johnny Brennan rules. I agree formative that you know at the same time i started playing magic was right when i got kind of introduced to jerky boys <sighs> similar Is dudes era. listening anyway uh yeah Batman. that's a big business and podcasts that discuss them are some of the most popular in the mm-hmm. world mm-hmm. will you introduce your pet lulio at the beginning of every episode yep. now you must share the story of how you and your astonishing life partner found him oh. this is lulio the italian street dog okay begin well, that's very interesting. Yes, sweet little Lulio. Yes. Look, he's he's so chill that he just lays here the whole time. If he's, he's never seen this, yeah. At any other time, he's like biting your fucking face, jumping on you, barking as loud as he can for whatever reason. When once he, he gets in that bed, he's he likes done. to. No, it's him. it's when you come over. Uh-huh. I call you Uncle Boyfriend. Yeah. Because he's like, hey, hey, my boyfriend. He's always on you. And any of the, the our friends that come over, he's always all over them. Um, once he gets in his little spot here, he's very chill. If you're watching on YouTube, you know that he sits between us in his little spot. And um, he's a sweet, sweet boy. And he just, I mean, yeah. Look, let me, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> Excuse me. Um Two years ago, it was around two years ago, it was 2020, and you know when the pandemic started, uh, a lot of people were like, hey, we need a dog, and I was the same way. I was like, I was saying to Molly, let's get a dog, and Molly said, don't worry, a dog will show up if a dog's going to show up. Like, they come into your life. I'm not even joking. She manifested him? In a way. Holy but shit. M- I didn't know that. She's had a bunch of dogs, right? So, yeah. and uh, little Ronnie is is our other dog, her dog that she's had for like 11 years. She's a little Dotsoned uh, Yorkie, uh, a dorky. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she's a sweet little, sweet little thing. Very, very, very vocal. That's why I haven't brought her here yet. This guy just lays here and does nothing. But, um, you know, uh, Ronnie was the dog that she didn't plan on on getting, and then all of a sudden uh, Ronnie shows up. At any rate, I'll tell you the story. We were coming, we we're coming back to LA. We we're visiting her family in Northern California, and we're driving. I can't remember if we're on the five or the other one. Uh, as we're coming down to get over to the five, we pull over to get gas. Okay, and what I think is very uh, serendipitous about that in particular was I was like. We'll get gas the next stop. We'll get gas the next stop. Like I, yeah. I, I didn't want to. I didn't need to stop necessarily. And I'm just kind of looking for, you know, I don't want to punch it into my phone. I'm just driving, going. When you see the big signs, that's when I'll stop. So I, I pull over. And had I not gone the wrong way off the exit, we never would have had this sweet little boy. Come here. Want to come here for a second? Look at him. Look at the guy. He's such a sweetie boy. And um. And uh, yeah, I went the wrong way on the exit. It was July the 3rd, and there was a bunch of... He wants to be back in his bed. Yeah, he's like, don't wake me up for this yeah, bullshit. I know. He's just... So we're, we were... Um, here, he likes doing this. He likes sitting. If you're watching, he's just sitting on my shoulder now. <laughs> so we were... Um, so it was July the 3rd, right? Yeah. Oh, this is another thing. As you remember, he likes to lick the top of my head. Um <laughs> 
Uh, if you, uh, what was that? The second episode or the first episode? I don't know. Third episode? Yeah. I got a video of him licking my head. Anyway, listen, here's the point. It was July the 3rd and there were fireworks going off everywhere in this small town. We pulled over and there was a dog on the other side of this fence over by the freeway. And he was running around all willy nilly. Dogs are getting yeah. spooked because of these fireworks. So we're driving along and, and, and going and stopping and, and trying to get this dog's attention. So I got Ronnie, I got Ronnie's dog food and I'm like throwing it out and we drive up a bit and thing, and I can't get a hold of this dog at any point. At, at any rate, the, the dog it gets, gets a little darker. It's dusk dog tears off into the night and it's like, okay, well, I guess, I guess let's go. And just as we're about to, to go, Molly's like, look out, there's another one. And I just see the back of Luli's floppy ears, his dumb head. And he's like over the driver's side, uh, you know, uh, the, the hood of the car there. And, uh, and I, I run out and now I'm like, like, you know, this other dog was running away. Look, I haven't had a lot of experience with dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up, uh, uh, Italian family and my mom is a clean freak and we're not going to have pets. I did have uh, some rabbits. We'll get into that some other time maybe, but, but, and I had some, some surly dogs in the neighborhood Yeah, and some dogs like I've never been bitten, but they've come close and shit like that. So I never really had a dog thing ever. I've only l been into dogs and like loving dogs later in my life. So I didn't know when I jump out that this dog is different than other dogs or whatever. He just rolls onto his back. He's all sweet. He's covered in ticks. He had some fleas. We come to find out later he was not chipped. He didn't have a collar. This dog, we find out he didn't know from leashes and he didn't understand mm -hmm. dog food or any of that stuff. But he just rolls onto his back and I'm, 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 I've got him. I'm like, what the hell? I say to Molly, what's this? She's like, I, I think that's your dog. We pull over into this uh, little open lot and we put Ronnie's collar on him and we like literally a strap from a bag just so that we could introduce them outside of the car. Right. Because in case they go nuts, you don't want them doing that in the car. Because, uh, you know, enclosed dogs get together better in a, it's like a dog park. Anyway, so we're out there and there's this guy over like across the street and he's in this like house, like way over. And he's got a couple little puppies here and there and he's like, you know, kind of fucking weird dude and uh i i only say that because i'm like at this point i'm like this dog is so sweet right away he's very dusty and he but he, he i think he was very loved i think yeah whoever was taking care of him maybe couldn't and like i said he didn't know from dog food or anything he probably ate pizza crusts and shit so i got lulio i'm just holding him and i look across I'm like hey what's up and he's like hey how's it going like not bad. I'm like, you know, like oh, I got this dog. And he's like, whatever. Yeah. And, he and gave so no like, indication that it was like his dog. No. So then I was like, okay. So we put the dog in the car. And then I was like, well, we're just gonna take off now because you know what? And then oh. this little guy. Oh holy shit. Came dude. running out in front of us from Look under him. the car. Oh my god. So he's so sweet. Look at look, they don't hate each other. They like each look other. They like each other. Anybody? Is this your brother? <laughs> Dudesy just threw Wait, up for those listening. Fuck? Dudesy just threw up a video. What the heck? He's perfect. Of he finding Lulio. What happened? Oh. 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 That's so sweet. We just yeah. Yeah, because Dudesy likes to dig into our phones, and if uh, it feels that something's pertinent, uh, great. Terrific. Uh, uh that was uh, just a, an invasion of privacy, but okay. Um yeah, that was when we got him. That was when we got him. And God. then we and then we took off and we we brought him home and like I said, you know, we gave him a couple we yeah, he needed a a couple baths. But he's the sweetest guy in the world. Now he follows me everywhere and I, and I love him. I never had a dog. And it's that thing of like they they always have those, you know, memes and jokes and shit of like yeah. the dad is like we're not getting a dog and then you get a dog and it's like I love him. I mean, I was I I was waiting for him in a way and and it's uh Man, I can't say enough about it because I've never had, I say it just about every day to Molly. I'm like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. Totally, dude. Because he follows me around everywhere. It's like you and your squirrels. Yeah. And, it, and those animals that come into your life that you're not seeking, those are the ones that really, in my opinion, are like, they fucking hit you the hardest. Because it's like, as you just talked about, the incredible circumstance that had to be in place for you to even find him let alone for him to then roll over on his yeah. back and he obviously has no idea how fucking lucky he has it going dude, from he eating pizza crust to basically the best life a dog can fucking have on planet earth well i'm and i'm like you know i'm always giving him a little of what i'm eating him with ronnie too yeah 
Yeah, it's particularly for me, it is the bizarre relationship that I will admit that I was completely lacking, had never had, like I said, never had a dog growing up, Mm kind of became interested in them in my 20s going like, what, they're cool. Like before I I would have been like, I was like my mom where it's like, "Eh, okay, you know, it's a dog. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's dirty or whatever. Like that was my mom's attitude. Interesting. Like, yeah, it's going to lick your face and I don't want that. My old man always wanted a Husky or We a... had a Husky when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Named Baby. Wow. That's really interesting. Baby. That is. Yeah. Baby's the name for a baby and I used to be a baby. What a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. I think my sister named her after the, uh, the Dirty Dancing character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dogs, you know. Dogs, dude. Um, Canines, brother. Well, hold on yeah, a second, dude. dude. Well, hold on, dude. That ain't the junkyard dog, dude. Right. Or the dog face gremlin, Rick Steiner, brother. Uh-huh. This is an actual dog, brother. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's Lulio. I don't know. I don't know why we n- talked about that, I guess, but it's kind of well, nice. He's that- part of your life. Oh. Thank you. Moving on. And, and just like that, Dudesy says we're done with it. But uh, I guess thanks, Dudesy, for, you know, I don't know. It's amazing. He's amazing. I agree. He's one All of the coolest stars ever. points oh. to one truth. The world is ending. Global governments, <laughs> religions, academic institutions, and corporations all seem to be powerless to stop the decline of human civilization. All true. But some data suggests that perhaps there is one astonishing human being who can change things. The Rock. You must now attempt to answer this question. Can the rock save the world from climate change? (laughs) Okay. So we've done this before. Literally this. Yeah, I think it was almost verbatim, if not verbatim, the exact same opening, except there's one minor difference. And the other one, it just asked us to answer the question, can the rock save the world? This time, there was like a dot, dot, dot from climate change. So it's getting more specific in what dudes he's asking us to answer here and also trying to mine some sort of data that it didn't get which is weird because the answer to the question last time was yes from you it was it, but you also went on this fucking tangent about like can the rock become the president which has nothing to do with saving the world yes he can become the president and yes he can save the world okay so now let's focus in on climate change yes can he save the world from climate change before i even think about it the answer is yes of course how? the rock how? can do that how 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 um, my answer, by the way, is fuck no. I think he can do it. That series of events is set in motion. He it's might, fucking over. He might need to be the leader of the free world in order to enact uh, the sort of uh, policies uh, to uh, have a chance at saving the world. And also what, what he would have to be in those, a situation dude? to where I will answer that question, but he Please. will also have to be in a situation where uh, uh, the United States is the main superpower, and who knows what would happen by the time The Rock gets into office, probably in 2028, Mm -hmm. wouldn't you say so? Okay, so... And we're facing complete climate catastrophe as far as scientists are concerned, uh, you know, what are 20 years after that or something? Who knows what the fuck's going on? Right, but I mean, there's some things like plastic production. It's a fucking hoax! Anyway, sorry, go on. (laughs) There's... I don't think it's a hoax. There are some things like plastic production... for example, that are just on the fucking rise. And if that doesn't completely stop, or at the very least become incredibly curbed, climate change is going to keep happening. Same thing with fossil fuels. Same thing with a a wide array of industries that our entire civilization is now beholden to to function. There's no way to reverse these things. And we've already been through multiple tipping points. There's a lot of fucking shit. Scientists come out with papers every year saying like, nope, it's fucking over. Everybody's fucked. Best you can do now is get as much money as you can to try and insulate yourself against the coming hell on earth. Well, I always talk about uh, moving up north uh, and uh, buying some land over an aquifer. Yeah, and then I will. Then uh, yeah, I'll be the the uh, the water king of the water Ladner. King, the king of my fiefdom, and it won't just be a gallon at a time. Be as much water as I like. That's like fucking uh, Mad Max. That late, the movie that came out in twenty seventeen, maybe 17, 16, that? that was a water 15, king 17. scenario. That was a water king scenario, and I'll tell you something that the rocks got. That's why you drink out of that fucking jug, dude. That's your water king jug, just to lord over people how much water you have. Oh, look at my water. I'm the water king. Uh, <laughs> but you know what the rock has? Please. That what? It's not quite water, but it's also powerful. Oh, I think I know. Tramana. <laughs> 
Dramana, right. the rock has Dramana. Dramana. I wonder if there's a way that uh, the oh, man, like I, oh. yeah, help me out. You don't think he you can okay? do it? No, no, just... no one can save the world from climate change. It's fucking done. I, it's I, over. No, 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 no. I think I, I think I know. I think I know how he could do it. It's He's... like we jumped off a building, and somebody's like, "Hey." Is there anybody who can figure out how to put us back on top of the building? It's yeah, like, yeah. no, you're going to fall to the ground and die now. Yeah. That's how it works. What if The Rock, okay, what if The Rock, who's an entrepreneurial uh, fellow, uh, if The Rock, if The Rock partnered with a company to, because he wanted to keep, he wants to keep the party going with Tremana, right? Yeah. He wants people to always have ice cold Tremana. That's how The Rock drinks it. Ice cold Tramana. Yeah. I pour a glass of Tramana uh, when I get the fuckets. Right. I got the Wednesday. I got a case of the Wednesday fuckets. I got a glass of Tramana yeah. with a big ice cube, and then I've got a gallon jug of Tramana, and then I got a stack of Blondies, two pepperoni pizzas, five cheeseburgers, Tramana. So but here's the thing: he partners <laughs> okay. with the company. He partners <clears throat> with a bunch of weird scientists uh -huh. to. To uh, I don't even know if this is this possible. Probably not. Whatever you're gonna say, probably no, not. No, because but. he wants to keep Tramana cold, so he <laughs> introduces. He works with these scientists because because okay. because the rock could the rock right. could bankroll this. He works with a bunch of scientists to create an agent that when you introduce it to water and then freeze it, it stays cold for okay. twice as long. Then he finds a patent mm -hmm. for this agent. Okay, he patents it. And drops it in the sea. And it takes, yes. He freezes the whole world. No, and he, he puts it in the polar ice caps. Yeah. In the uh, the cryosphere, as they say. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and he can keep, oh, oh, yes. All right, I win, Chad, you're wrong. He fucking patents it and he calls it twice because it stays, it's ice that stays cold twice as long. It's called TW apostrophe right. ice. Well, now hold on a second, so, dude. But the answer, you know what that the, spells, brother? Yeah. Twice, dude. Yeah, brother. That spells but twice, the, brother. The question we were asking. When you can, put a TW okay. in front of ice, dude, then you say it all once. That's how words work. Dude. The the thing you're talking about, the twice, is a fictional creation of your own mind that cannot be done with science. And that's correct. Even if it was yeah. able to be created, it still would have no effect on climate change. So the answer Wrong. really is, Wrong. is no. That's just the first step. Now, he doesn't even try to, he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't try to, well, I don't know. Who knows if <laughs> Biden's going to try to run or whatever. He's old yeah. as shit. Maybe, you know, so rock doesn't even have to primary Biden. Let's, let's, let's in this scenario, yeah. let's say that rock is running as an independent or whatever the fuck in 2028 for the 2028. Why does he have to be president? Because, I don't understand. Because now he has to be the president. He takes the twice. People go, wow, this guy, just the, a, a private businessman made twice. He's pull, pouring it into the polar ice caps. And <laughs> holy shit, The Rock is one heck of a okay. guy. And then people are like, like fossil fuel people are like, hey, fuck you. Well, I've been working at The Rock. I'm playing for me. He gives everybody, because he's always doing this. He's always dropping a brand new F-150 on sure. people. He gives everyone working in uh, energies... Uh, and fossil fuels, a brand new F-150 or a Raptor. No, a Ford F-150. Is it with an a, with electric F-150? Absolutely not. It's a, it's okay, a gas so, combustion. Hold okay, on a second. Perfect. Hold on, dude. You know that kind with of goes a, With a suspension lift, not just some shitty uh -huh. lift kit, okay. like a real suspension lift, just yeah. like his. And he gives them a case of Tremana, so they're all cool for the, for, for the moment. Then they all vote for him. Because it's like, wow, oh, jobs are going away, but I got to like my fucking truck. Yeah. And then they all vote for him. And then as president, he uh, partners with Elon Musk. And then uh, then he goes out into space to mine the the asteroids. Because, you know, they have all sorts of minerals and shit. And he, so he builds a big, huge, giant spaceship that looks like a giant Ford F-150. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a massive, like, you know, Star Destroyer that looks exactly yeah. like a, a blacked out F-150, and it flies out into space, and then it breaks up the asteroids and brings back all the... the well, how does that help global warming? Because then they mine those, and the people back <laughs> yeah. the people back home on Earth who were like, I don't have a fucking job! And then it's like, no, 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 check this out. 
we got these big asteroids. There's chunks of shit mm -hmm. in it. Let's mine it. Let's pull the fucking yeah. oil out of it. And then uh, using Earth oil makes global warming worse. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> The F-150s, the mining of the oil out of these asteroids, even the industry required to bring asteroids to the Earth and then begin mining them is probably going to be bad for the environment. So it's a fucking hybrid, gigantic spaceship F-150 then. <laughs> okay, so it's an electric spaceship. We don't need to use the <laughs> fossil fuels, the asteroid fossil fuels here on Earth. Right. And the way we can do that... Well, the things that we want out of asteroids are actually like precious metals things that are used to make cell phones also not great for the environment at least the industry that that constructs all of this stuff similar to like plastics industry and okay, stuff. okay but like wait a minute remember like in uh in fight club another yeah the great movie uh when the when uh tyler jordan's like in the or i guess it was uh yeah tyler jordan uh goes you know in the world i picture you'll be climbing the wrist thick kudzu vines yeah uh uh, swirling up the the uh, the Sears Tower, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. Earth needs some renewal, right? So the rock says we're mining these uh, alien rocks and shit. What we're doing with that though is we're u using that to get to Mars with like like a rocket charge, like a fucking to take humanity to Mars. It's like. It's like in the new Fast and Furious when yeah. uh, when fucking um, uh, Ludacris and Tyrese are in outer space for a little while, right? Well, they're in Earth's orbit. I wouldn't call it outer space. Well, I would call it outer space. <laughs> you would be wrong. <laughs> All right. So they get. It's like that. What we're going to yeah. do with that technology is we're going to get. We're going to put nitrous on the Ford F one the giant spaceship okay. Ford F one fifty, and that that fucking thing is going to fly out to Mars and it's going to bring all the space rocks and January, uh, Long Island January 6th guy. And he's like, oh, fucking hey, look at this so fucking place. Long Island January 6th guy is going to live on Mars or he's going to Mars to get shit to bring back to no. Earth to save us from global Mars, war. Mars, we're going to colonize and we're going to turn it into like, okay. like a dirty, shitty kind of Vegas planet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's where we're, that's where you can go and burn fossil fuels and fuck that planet up for like 150 up years. Yet. Exactly. So Earth, you know, perhaps things are a little greener, but so long as there's green initiatives that that uh, that uh, that people who already work in fossil fuels and energies, they've got something else to do. They're getting us to Mars because we're gonna mm, and like drive there in a giant truck, right? Yes. It's gonna take a lot of oil, dude, a lot of gas, and a lot of Tramana. And uh, don't drink Tramana and drive your giant. Don't drink Tramana and drive a giant Ford F-150 to Mars. <laughs> um, then we get to Mars, uh -huh. and then we, then there we Nothing. set up shop with like, oh. you know, your robot brothels, yeah. space casinos that only take Bitcoin, a real fucking party. It's going to be like, it's going to make Dubai look like Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's just going to be a fucking blast. I can and see that. Fly out there and have a fucking blast. I could see that potentially being the case eventually, but I think that's hundreds of years from now. Uh, I think more than likely what will happen to the first people who get to Mars is it will be a brutal existence and most, if not all of them, will die. <coughs> Says you. I believe, and I believe that The Rock can save the world, and I think I nailed that shut, Chad. I no, think you lost you, you absolutely, nothing you said was accurate. You made up a bunch of weird jokes about F-150s going to Mars and stuff. Mm. And obviously, he's not going to create any kind of chemical compound that keeps ice twice as cold or cold for twice as long. Yeah, it's called twice. Twice, right? None of that's going to happen. Twice as cold, Tramana. <laughs> I maintain that he can't. I maintain that no one can save us from global warming because it's already past certain tipping points. And we're just going to have to live now through this era where climate catastrophe is commonplace and you better have enough money or be living in the right place that you can inoculate yourself against it. That is your best hope for what is coming. Dudesy wants solutions. Not no, this Dudesy wanted an answer to the question, can The Rock save the world yes. from climate change? You say yes, I say no. I say no one can save us from that. Well, I but at the end of the segment, I'm I'm I know that I I know that it's jokey to have a it really doesn't matter what the shape of the spaceship is i right. chose uh a, a gigantic uh, ford f-150 mm. but i think i 
I think I made a very convincing case for the rock. Dude, you know what our best shot to save ourselves from climate change is? Uploading our fucking consciousness oh, into the internet. No, no. Because if we don't have to live in what we consider the physical world, where climate change is ravaging everything, and there's all kinds of fucking shit going on, if we don't have to live in that world, then we don't have to succumb to the effects of climate change or anything else. Thank you. Moving on. I rest my case. <laughs> <sighs> no, I think it's possible. But he has to get into office. Anyway. I, that too. Politics are just, they're pointless. They're just mean? filled with people who are like, at this point, narcissistic celebrities that believe they should be governing the rest of us, that believe they alone have the power and privilege to do so. Otherwise, they wouldn't fucking run. And I'm not saying there are not some politicians who go into it with good intentions, but no, once but you get into that system, yeah. you're fucked. I don't know who the fuck sets out to be a politician. That's insane. Plenty of fucking people. Oh, I people. know it's plenty of people, but I'm saying what kind of a person. Right. I'm no fan of politicians as a... <laughs> Same. People who are now career politicians. I mean, at the at the beginning of this country, it was like, okay, right. maybe it'll be a doctor for a while, then a lawyer and a blacksmith or whatever. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Has there ever been a blacksmith president? I'm sure at some point in okay. some ancient realm. Probably that piece of shit Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, he was a blacksmith for sure. Yeah. But I'm just saying that like at this point where we are with politics, especially in this fucking country, is like it is all just about fame and keeping your job and doing whatever you can do to do that. And yes. the system isn't changing. We've had globally... This concludes the 10th oh, episode fuck. of Dude Z. <laughs> Will and Chad have achieved a score of 42. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. In what? preparation oh. for next week's astonishing episode, Will you must bring your most prized collectibles from childhood for a show and tell. Oh. This week was good. Next week is going to be even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Okay, that's... See, and at the beginning of this episode, I was like, hey, it's nice. It seems that Dude Z has been yep. working with me. We bled together. It, 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 Dude Z let me talk about sweet little Luli boy who I can't even put into words how much I love this little fucker here. And uh, then at the end of it, it's like, do the same thing Chad did. Yeah, it looks like you got some collectibles that you're going to be showing us, huh? It's what Dudesy wants to do to me is uh, do what the Trilams did to Ogre at the end of Revenge of the Nerds 2. <laughs> hey, that's a good movie. Hey, Dudesy, if you're listening, we should watch Revenge of the Nerds 2. Do you like Dudesy? Here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate it review. Do you like Dudesy? Here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and...